Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be sharing with you some freezer meal recipes that I had prepared in preparation for the birth of my baby, which if you can kind of see right now my arms, my baby has arrived and he's just a few days old and I have at least two videos that I need to edit and get out to you guys. So if you've been wondering why I've been kind of MIA, that is why. So. Let's just get into it, um, preparing some really good freezer meals um, for postpartum. So I first started by cooking some chicken thighs in my crock pot and Instapot to get ready. Um, I'm gonna try to make this into as many meals as I can. Um, I want to at least get my, my least amount is I would like to at least get seven meals done for at least the first week. But really my goal is actually for the first two weeks. So I want to have in total 14 meals planned out for me and my family. I already have two freezer meals done that my mom so kindly did for me. So thank you, mom. Um, she was over here yesterday and she got me two lasagnas already made in the freezer. So today... I had already set out some packs of chicken in my fridge over the weekend because I really needed to use them up anyways. And I've thrown them in the crock pot. And so tonight my goal is to not only make dinner, but also get two freezer meals out of all this chicken is my hope. I'm gonna try to spread it as much as I can. So you're gonna come along with me as I do that. The first thing I gotta do is because this chicken is now done cooking, I have to go ahead and shred up all this chicken. And I'm gonna shred it all and just get it put into a bowl so then that way I can start assembling whatever meals I wanna make. My plan is right now, um, for tonight's dinner, I'm making um, enchiladas. And then I'm hoping that I can get maybe one more enchilada meal out of that. And then I also plan on making a kind of chicken and rice with cauliflower casserole out of that too. So that is our goal for right now. So I have to say one of the things that I detest the most is probably shredding chicken, especially when it's on the bone. I obviously bought, you know, chicken thighs that had the bone in just because it really is the cheapest at the store or well, it used to be anyways. <laughs> um, but I get really weird about chicken. I don't like the veins that are left on the chicken bones or any spots that just look, I don't know, that just don't look right to me. Um, I don't like any of the fatty cart cartilage pieces that can come off with the bones. So honestly, this task that I kind of set up for myself, um, I really did not enjoy, <laughs> but at least I got through it and I got all the chicken shredded up like I needed to. It's just, I feel like I probably made it a little harder on myself by doing it this way. I felt like I probably honestly could have just bought chicken thighs that didn't have the bones in or even just like chicken breast, but I was trying to work with what I had and I bought a ton of these chicken th thighs on sale at the grocery store one time and they've been sitting in my freezer. so. I need to get them used up anyway, so at least I did it and I got it done and over with. Okay, so I got all my chicken shredded up. It's not as much as I probably would have hoped for or expected, but I did use chicken thighs and um, I think that's kind of why, because I, um, I used chicken thighs with the bones in, and so that just, you know, it gives it great flavor, but sometimes you don't get a lot out of it. So I don't know if I'm gonna completely get three meals out of this, but I'm gonna try the best I can. The next thing I'm gonna do inside the same Instapot without cleaning it, because there is some kind of chicken broth already in there, I'm gonna get some rice going inside of there. Okay, so three cups of rice to three cups of water into my Instapot, and then I'm gonna set it for 10 minutes. And then I'm going to do, let it do a natural release for five. And so it'll be in there in total for 15 minutes, but it is a really nice and quick and easy way to get rice done real quick. Nope, that's not what I'm 
So while my rice was cooking, I went ahead and was making the sauce that went for the chicken and rice casserole. So this was a recipe that I think I grabbed off of Pinterest, I wanna say. Um, I'm gonna try to make sure I link all the recipes, but obviously, you know, a quarter cup of heavy cream with half a block of cream cheese into here. Um, kind of let that melt on top over the stove. And once that kind of started to melt, I added in some cheddar cheese, which as you can see, I dropped some on my burner. So, you know, don't judge me. I'm a very messy cook. Um, but yeah, you wanna add some cheddar cheese into this to kind of make a really nice cheese sauce to go into the chicken and rice casserole. Uh, and then you also wanna go ahead and make sure that you add in some seasonings. I went ahead and did some pepper and some garlic powder just to give it good flavor. And then also after that, you're gonna to wanna to add in about a third a cup of chicken broth to this. Okay, so I have my rice done inside the Instapot. And actually what I'm gonna go ahead and do to it real quick is I am gonna add a bag of rice cauliflower as well and mix that together with it. And this, obviously, you know, they just come in like little microwave bags. I went ahead and just microwave mine real quick for about five minutes in the microwave. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this. I'm going to first start assembling the enchiladas for tonight, move on to enchiladas for one of the freezer meals, and then we're going to do the chicken and rice cauliflower casserole. And I do plan on like using a little bit of this rice and with some of the enchiladas to kind of obviously make it go further. So obviously starting off with the enchiladas, you know, I just like to buy the old El Paso red enchilada sauce. Um, it's not our favorite brand. There's a different brand in the stores that is, I discovered is actually my favorite. Um, it was somewhat of a new discovery, but they didn't have it. So just went with this one. I always like to just put a little sauce in the bottom of the pan and obviously just start rolling up the enchiladas. I put a little bit of chicken in there with a little bit of the rice and um, a little bit of the cheese and just roll them up and put them in the pan. And then obviously later on top them with some more sauce. And obviously the one that you see me putting in my casserole dish right now is what we ate for dinner that night. And it actually turned out really good. So I'm excited to try these out. We haven't made these yet for um, one of my postpartum meals just yet, but I know it's going to be really good because these turned out really great. <laughs> Next up here, I'm getting my chicken and rice, or it's called a creamy chicken and rice casserole together. So as you can see here inside my pot, I had my rice and I did add a bag of frozen cauliflower rice to it just to add some protein to it. And then I'm going to pour over that cheese sauce that I made. Um, I definitely think probably for the cheese sauce, I probably could have like done a little bit more of it. Um, just because, I don't know, it seemed like I could have added more to, to this. And then obviously adding just the rest of the chicken that I had, which honestly, you know, I don't, I actually feel like it was a pretty good amount. The amount of dishes I got out of this, I got three dishes and I was pretty happy with it. Um, sometimes I feel like with some of these meals that I made, I probably try to stretch them a little bit too much, if that makes sense. But obviously I'm just stirring everything together. And I'm, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to toss it with some cheese. And that's just another meal ready to go for when I need it. Okay, so I completely forgot to start sharing this meal before I really got it going. But this is the next two freezer meals that I'm doing. They're going to be the same. It is a keto, that is beautiful, thank you. 
It is a keto cheeseburger casserole. And we actually, I actually made this last night and it is very good. Like you would not know this was keto or that there was cauliflower in here. So this is really, really good. So what I basically did was I browned two pounds of meat. The recipe only calls for one, but since I'm doubling it, um, you brown the meat, you want to put in some sort of like steak seasoning is what it called for. So, um, I did that. After that, you want to put in the flour. So it called for, I think, two cups of cauliflower. I you can also do, obviously, like a full head of cauliflower and rice it yourself, which I did last night. And that tr turns out really good as well. Basically, what you want to do is mix in a cauliflower, hamburger, cubed uh, cream cheese, two eggs, and a half a cup of heavy cream. And you're going to, like, pour that over them and top it with cheese and then... You're gonna bake them. And these turned out really well. We've already had some of these. This is really funny too. I prepared some cookie dough to make, have like homemade fresh baked cookies for postpartum. I ended up eating them all anyways, but we still have the banana muffins left to go. <laughs> but um, yeah, that didn't turn out. I also made a pecan pie. Um, not for any reason, just to have. This didn't make it to postpartum meals either. But hey, um, I did go ahead and employ my kids to help make some kind of like we we prepped some breakfast so I have all of my little mini dash makers out as you can see we have a ton of them and I employed each of my kids to go ahead and make up some waffles so they could have them for breakfast my mom was also here that day helping me um, with the kids and getting all of them made and these are like the Christmas edition ones so there was as you can see here the snowflake we have a gingerbread man one, and then my son had the Christmas tree one. So lots of fun, different ones. They had a lot of fun doing this. And you know, with each mini dash maker, it comes with like a little recipe card. So you can, you know, know how to make the waffles, which I at least appreciated that I didn't have to go hunt down a waffle recipe. Okay, everybody, we're back making some more freezer meals. And this time I'm going to do just some really quick freezer kind of crock pot meals, really just dump and go recipes. I did get two bags of some chicken tenders and I'm going to see how many meals I can get out of it. I'm hoping to get as many as I can, um, but I'm also just kind of working with things I have in my pantry because I didn't really plan this out. I just knew I had some extra frozen chicken that I was wanting to do some freezer meals with. So the first one I'm gonna do is a slow cooker white chicken chili. I already have my freezer bag and I've already labeled it. And I'm gonna kind of try to like set this here in the bowl because I don't have one of those fancy little things, but um, to this, I'm gonna add about roughly a pound of chicken, maybe a little bit more, but roughly half this bag is what I'm gonna add to it. I don't think I ever said what I was making here, but I am making kind of like a chicken chili type of dish. So the next thing I'm going to add to it is two cans of beans. Now it does call for cannellini beans or white beans. I don't have any of that on hand, so I'm just going to go with pinto beans because to me, beans are beans. It's all kind of the same. Um, and the recipe does call for two cans of diced green chilies, which again, I don't have, but I do have a can of Rotel. So I'm gonna use the can of Rotel because pretty much kind of the same. <laughs> Maybe a little spicier. I am gonna go ahead, go ahead and add in a diced, um, diced up onion that I have here. So recipe calls for two cloves of garlic diced. I just have this nice little squeezer bottle, so I'm just gonna kinda add a, a squirt of garlic in there. And then we're gonna start adding in our spices. So to the bag, we are going to add in two teaspoons of cumin. It calls for one teaspoon of chili powder. Then also calls for half a teaspoon of dried oregano. I'm personally going to add in about a half a teaspoon of paprika because I do think that adds um, just another level of flavor to it. 
As far as for a fourth a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, I'm not gonna add that in just because since these are gonna be postpartum freezer meals for me and I am planning on nursing, I don't wanna make anything too spicy and already, you know, things with chili and the can of Rotel is already gonna kinda give it a level of spice. I just don't wanna like kick it up any more than what it needs to be. So also a half a teaspoon of salt goes in here. I'm gonna try to kinda get everything mixed in there with the chicken real quick. Two cups of chicken broth to this when I go to take it out and put it in the crock pot. This will go into a crock pot, it says on low, for about six hours, or you probably do high for about four hours. That's one freezer meal down for today. Okay, so the next one that we're gonna do is Italian creamy chicken, which sounds so good. Um, it's very sim simple and easy. Any of these recipes that I do find, I will certainly try to link below. But, so I'm gonna make two of these. So I do have, I did the rest of that bag from the previous one. I split it up and then did a couple extra in there just to make sure there's enough chicken because I am feeding a big family. So to this, they want Italian seasoning mix. And in that recipe, they actually called for the packet of Italian dressing seasoning mix, which I don't have on hand. And so I'm just gonna kind of do my own seasonings in here. <laughs> just gonna throw in there. And I'm really not gonna just kind of measure this. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of dump some in there. And I know that I am going to do some of my garlic in there as well. Um, then it calls for four ounces of cream cheese in each bag, which I just like open this one up today. So I just want to save it real quick or use it up real quick. So I'm going to split the block, even though it's technically not four ounces each, it's good enough. And then I'm going to add in one can of cream of chicken soup in here. So that is it. That's all the ingredients for this one. So again, I'm gonna kind of just seal these up real quick. And just kind of give them a quick zhuzh around in the bag. So these, again, you can cook them on low for six hours or on high for four. And it says in the recipe that you can serve this obviously over noodles or mashed potatoes. So this is one I'm very excited for. It's gonna be really good. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna do is chicken and gravy. And again, this one is a super simple one. So in my bag, I went ahead and I split up the rest of my chicken tenders. And all you need for this one is, of course, a can of cre cream and chicken soup for each of them. And then we're going to add in a tablespoon of brown gravy and a tablespoon of a ranch seasoning mix seasoning mix here so it's basically kind of like splitting the pack to be honest yeah so you're basically just gonna split the pack between both of your meals and then again split your pack of brown gravy or a tablespoon of each if you really want to be precise but it's basically you're splitting the pack between two I'm just kind of and then we're going to put a can of cream and chicken into these. Okay, that is it for these ones. Um, again, you're going to cook this on low for six hours. It does say that when it does come time to cooking to add three-fourths cup of water to your crock pot or instant pot. Because I'm sure you guys know you could do these in this pot as well. Um, and then also you would want to serve these more than likely over mashed potatoes or rice. Um, either option would be good. I think the recipe did also suggest noodles, but to me rice or mashed potatoes sound good. <laughs> 
So I also went to Costco and I got a couple of Costco meals. Um, you know, they always have kind of like mac and cheese, fettuccine Alfredo. I got some of those and I froze them in my freezer. So that kind of rounded off all the meals. And I think in total, I did get two weeks worth of meals. Um, obviously we're already eating on them. Babies come and they're super helpful. Um, I would also suggest anybody who is also going postpartum, probably something I wish I would have done was make breakfast burritos because in the past, usually I've had like my sister-in-laws or some friends make them for me and, or even like my husband will. And just this time it's just been kind of crazy and haven't gotten to it, but those are really helpful too for the mornings or if you need a snack kind of midday, good protein boost. So that's all for this video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys are interested in like maybe like a labor and delivery story, how things went there. Um, I was planning on doing a hospital bag video, never got around to it. So maybe I'll actually do a video on what I actually took with me or what I actually used out of my bag. If you guys are interested in that, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Happy holidays, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hold up, I am on my way. I'm in motion. Let's go to the ocean. Yeah, let's go.